Good morning. I bring greetings from our church from Vukovar. Greetings from my wife. She was here with me in the year of 2000. And I'm glad that my son Jonathan and myself, we are able to travel after eight years so that we could see some of the faces and remember you guys. And um, I'm glad to see new faces here. Uh, I wish that I could speak in my own language, but there is not going to be a, uh, you know, unless I'm in a charismatic church, that there is going to be a good preaching, but not understanding. <laughs> I think this, this is what takes in many of the churches, you know. I would like to share with you something that probably you've, you've been able to, to read many times. And um, the Apostle Paul in the, in the 12th chapter, in the first two verses to the Romans, is sending message to all of us. You know, to be able to understand the Bible, uh, how the Bible speaks, first we have to hear what it meant for them so to implement in our lives. But obviously these two verses are so direct and uh, this is what is written I'm going to read the second verse it says 12 verse 2 do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Lord, I pray that you're going to bless our mind, our heart, our thoughts, and we welcome you because we want you to speak to all of us. In Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. Because everything that we have comes and belongs to you. Amen. You know, the Apostle Paul, in the first verse says, Present yourself as a living sacrifice. In the second verse, the Apostle Paul says, Do not conform with this world. Don't become like this world. And I'm asking myself what it means, why he is asking us to not become like this world. This is the question that we have to, uh, that we have to answer. Why to not become like the world? Second question that we are going to ask is how we could protect ourselves to not become like the world. And the third question that we are going to ask is what benefits we have if we don't become like the world. You know, the Apostle Paul says, don't become like the world. Don't start thinking like the world. Why? Because if the second, in, the, in the second epistle of the Corinthians, fourth chapter, fourth verse, the Apostle Paul says, because there is a God of this world that blinds people. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna read, which is gonna become more clear to, to all of you. It says, chapter four, the God of the age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they, will, they cannot see the light of the gospel. But Lord, if we become uh, uh, like the world and we have all kinds of stuff adapted from the world and bring it to the church, then the church is going to be packed with people. You mean packed with goats? I said something what made impact on me, what Spurgeon said. He said, in the last days, there, are going to be, there, there is going to come time when the church is going to be entertained by clowns of preachers just to entertain the goats. 
But that is not going to be a gospel. The founder of Sal Salvation Army said there is going to be a pre preachings, but gospel without repentance. And what Paul is writing here says, you know, you do not need to accept the world with its own thinking because this world has its own master. And that's why Jesus said to the to disciples, said, you, you, you live in this world, but you are not part of the, of the world. It's so sad, brothers and sisters, to see how many churches are adapting families to live together, to not be married. Oh, it's only a document. Oh, it's only a blessing in the church. Oh, we are faithful one to another. But you know, God brought a marriage in the Garden of Eden to be a faithful relationship with man and woman. And we are today adapting the world. Oh, it's nothing too dangerous to sleep before marriage. It's nothing this, and it's nothing that, and it's nothing that. And then you become like the world. And that's why we have a lot of goats. But God came to look for the lost sheep. You know, second thing, why to not conform with the world is because the Apostle Paul in chapter 3, verse 19, in the first Corinthians says, the thoughts of the world are foolishness. The thoughts, the thinking of this world is foolishness. Oh, but I want to sound like this professor. I want to be, I, I need to have the status in the society. Third, why you do not need to adapt the world? Because Paul says in 7th chapter in 1 Corinthians, 31st verse, the world is passing. It's everything, temp uh, it's, uh, uh, it's everything uh, temporary. Everything is passing in this world. Even you are just on the journey. And whatever you have is going to be left here. And you are going to be forgotten in this world. After 100 years from now, nobody is going to remember you. But yet God is calling you to a new world where you are going to be always remembered. Because there is a book and in that book is written your name with the blood of the one that was on the cross. You know, 1 John, 2nd chapter, 15 verse, the Apostle, Paul, uh, the, the Apostle John says do not love the world because the one that loves the world the love of god is not in him i hope we are able to understand that we are citizens and faithful citizens of this present world but we are belonging to another king to another world, to the kingdom of God. You know, how to protect myself to not become like the world? You know, there is a story in the Bible when uh, Daniel and his two, uh, three friends were brought from uh, Jerusalem, Judea, into Babylon. And in the first chapter, it's written, that when they were brought over there, the king decided to reprogram their thinking. You know, he gave them Babylonian literature, Babylonian style of life, the wealth of Babylon, the miracle of Babylon, 
was placed at the front of them with an idea to change their way of thinking. Even he gave them a new name. He assigned the names of the gods of the Babylon. He took the name of Daniel. He was not anymore called Daniel. He was called the name of, 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 of Babylonian God. But how Daniel protect himself? It's written, Daniel made decision within his heart that he has to draw a line. How we protect ourselves to not become like the world? We need to make decision within our heart to become a living sacrifice. We have to make decision within our heart to restrict our appetites. Daniel made decision to not eat from the table. It was not wrong to eat whatever was pre uh, present. But Daniel knew if I'm going to enjoy this kind of life, I'm going to easily become one of them. I have to stick with the life that I was taught by my father and mother so that I will not forget the God whom I'm serving. Brothers and sisters, Christianity became today a style of life that you adapt something that brings you into a, a group so that you will say, I belong to this group without limitations. The Apostle Paul says, I could do everything. Everything is free for me. But I choose to not do everything only because I belong to a new world, to a different world. Daniel made decision and said, I cannot enjoy the food. I cannot enjoy the, uh, the, the vine. Because there is temptation that I will, if I don't put borders, I could become man without borders. And we became a world without borders. And that's, that's why G.K. GK Chester says, before you destroy the fence that your father built, ask yourself why your father built that fence. Today we are moving everything out from the churches what we inherit from our fathers because we are educated on the best schools but yet our world is becoming miserable every single day because there is less salt because there is less light and you are called to become and to be the salt of Jesus in this world. But Jesus said, if the salt lose its, its substance, for what use it is? But how the salt is losing its substance? When you create a world without borders, without rules. The devil wants to create a world without rules. Everything is okay. Men to, uh, to married men, woman to be married woman, no rules. Just as you feel, live your life. Can I ask you, can the architecture build a house, a building on 10 storage in a way how it feels? To put the metals up in the roof? And to not have foundations? Oh, let it put the glass in the foundations. That's stupid, yeah? yes. Because he has to stick with the rules of building. When you leave the rules of a family, how the family has to be educated and the children need to be raised, you ended up 
to be indeed foolish. Because the master of this, of this world has blinded them. Has blinded them. And you know, Daniel served with five kings. With all his five kings that he served, he was always number one. Why? Because he didn't allow his, his, his brain to be blind. Because he didn't allow the world's thinking to become his own thinking. Do not conform like this world, but with renewing your mind. You know, our mind is very important. You know what is your biggest wealth given to you? The biggest wealth given to you is not what you are going to inherit from your father and mother. The biggest health, the biggest wealth that you have and has been given to you, you carry it always between your own ears. That's your mind. But some people do not use their mind in a way God has given to them. You know, when you walk with Jesus and you know your boundaries, when you walk with Jesus and you do not conform like this world, then you are open with your mind to be connected with the one who created you. The biggest blessings given to human race came from those that were reading the Bible. The guys who create the airplanes, the brothers right, were believers reading the Bible. But today we are taught in our schools by the communists and socialists that uh, God does not need to be, to be part of the education because we are need to be free and need to create a world that we want, would like to create it. When we talk about Samuel Morse, when we talk about so many scientists, they were reading the Bible, getting in touch with the Spirit of God, and God was blessing them with blessings that you and I are enjoying today. When we keep our mind pure, when we ask questions, why God put these borders? Then we are able to use our mind for the glory of God. And when we use our mind for the glory of God, then we keep our mind clear, pure. And we are able to solve problems that this world is not able to solve them. You are able to go and navigate your life through difficult times without losing control. Why? Because you know that God is going to provide the next step even though you don't see the path further. But if you are the master of your life and you allowed to be a man with an open mind, then you walk out and sometimes you have to know you are going to lose your brain and you are going to be a man without mind and without brain. And you are going to become... You are going to become a cane for a garbage so that the devil is going to put just garbage into your life. That's why the Bible is calling us, renew your, your mind. How we are renewing our mind? We are spending time every morning, every evening, every day with Jesus. If you don't spend, it, if you don't spend time with Jesus, 
then you are spending time with the master of this world. Have you seen the cartoon Punchinello? Punchinello is a wooden toy. And he lives in a, t in a town where there are all wooden toys. And they have red stars, golden stars, and black dots. Punchinello was all with black dots because he was not good for nothing. And Punchinello was so tired of living, he started running away. And he saw somewhere out of the, co of the community one wooden toy, a girl with no red stars and no black dots. And he said, how is that that you are the only one with no ra uh, red stars and black dots? She says, oh, I go to see my master every day. Would you come with me? And Punchinello goes and the master says, Punchinello, where you are? I haven't seen you since I created you. And he said, I'm not good for nothing. I'm all just black dots. He said, Punchinello, it doesn't matter what other people think about you. It matters what I'm thinking. If you come every day, you are going to be clear. If you spend every day with me, you will be always clear. You will be, you will be always clean. How we keep clean minds? We read the word of God every single day. We spend time with God. We spend time with good, healthy Christians. We do not see it in the community with sinners, but we see it in the community with righteous people. Brothers, sisters, the success to be a successful Christian comes with a cost. And the cost is this. You make yourself part of a good Christian healthy Bible church and you spend time every day with Jesus you know we are called every day to clean our mind how we could clean our mind every single day we make decisions what we are going to do you know that you could care, that you are ha, that you had the ability to control your thoughts? But you will say, "No, I have dirty thoughts." Then switch the channel. You have the controller in your hands. Don't watch what brings pollution to your mind. Don't open your your ears what brings pollution to your, to your mind. You have chance to make decisions. What needs to come in so that a quality life is going to go out? So many times we blame the world. We blame other people for the style of life that we have. But your style of life didn't came by chance. You are allowed to become what you are today. Your life has been built not in one day. In many days. If you have problems with your thoughts. If you have problem with the way how you are thinking. Start drawing the lines as Daniel draw them. And make decision in your, in your heart. And say I'm not going to allow the world to change my character. My attitudes. My way of thinking. I'm not going to allow the world to have control of the way how I'm going to think. I'm going to allow Jesus to have control of my brain so that I'm going to renew my mind every single day. Brothers, the big heroes of faith were not born as heroes. They were made to become heroes because they are allowed to be trained. 
they put themselves in training so they became a heroes of faith. They were spending every single day with Jesus. They were drawing the lines so that the dirty pollution is not going to enter their life. Have you read the story of God's pioneer, Adonirib Judson? The man that spent seven years in the jungle of Myanmar in the prison? The man that lost his wife over there? Do you know how he became a great hero? As the number one student at Gordon, at, at Boston Univer University, Adonirim Judson made decisions to enter the army of God and not to pursue career in this uh, world. And that's why he became a man of God that spent seven years in the jungles in Myanmar, in Burma, in the prison. After he was released, do you know the first thing what he did? He walked into the desert. He built a tomb, a graveyard. He engraved a stone with these words. Here is buried Adonirim Judson, dead for this world, but alive for Christ. Only those that are saying, I, I, I want to be dead for this world, are those that are protecting their minds to be influenced by another world by Jesus who said I'm going to shine my light into your darkness so that you will become a light for those that are living in darkness we all have read the story of great hero of Africa Livingstone After his wife left and went back to England, he said, she said to him, you could stay, start te continue teaching the Bible. When I got well, I'm going to come back. But she was not able to go back. He went after five years later. She said, when I saw my husband, his skin was burned. He almost lost his shoulder he was crippled but there was a beauty of heaven present in his life because he said I belong to Jesus and I'm not gonna allow the world to design my thinking so that it's gonna destroy my family that I will have a good and easy life no I'm gonna go and pursue in this world, the message to be spread so that everyone will know that the world and whatever is in the world is passing away. But yet, every man has in his chest something eternal. And I'm going to tell every man and woman that God loves them. Brothers, sisters, my question for you this morning is, Do you have a clear borders? Or you enjoy the master of this world? You enjoy the music of this world created by the master of this world? You enjoy the rules by this world because are adopted by the master of this world? Or you are saying, if, anyone is if everyone is dishonest, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to lie on my taxes I'm not gonna lie on my uh, on my uh, decisions within the company I'm not gonna have a, a secrets from my wife I'm gonna be a responsible father so that the light of Jesus is gonna be present wherever I go but how I could do that very easy Give control of your mind to the one who creates your mind. Give control of your thoughts to the one who creates you. To have a pure thoughts. That's why the Apostle Paul says to the Philippians in the fourth chapter, eighth verse, Brothers, think 
about this which is noble, good, clean, precious. Don't give your brain to think about unclean things. My question for you is, do you find yourself in a situation when you are asking, I'm confused, I don't know what to do, I'm empty, I'm struggling. You know, Christians sometimes are confused. Christians sometimes struggle. Christians sometimes go through doubts, but at the end of the day, they are winners. Do you know why? Because the biggest riches that you have, the biggest wealth that you have, it's given to you. It's called mind. That's why the Apostle Paul says, present yourself as a living sacrifice to God so that you are going to become a worship to Him. Don't confirm conform with this world but renew your mind so that you will discover how much richness you have in him how we could do this spend time with jesus amen amen, amen.